How are you? How are you? I'm good. I just want to know that um, this is not going to be on some bloopers reel, is there? <laughs> Am I like the uh, the fail of Alpha and Omega? <laughs> <laughs> are you a blooper waiting to happen? <laughs> no, no. The whole, my whole... Let's start here. What What's your biggest challenge? Well, and that's what I was going to say. I do have a, a trouble with balancing leadership and friendship with my dog. I just don't know you know, the proper balance of how strict to be and how to make them leave them. Like be by yourself. I don't want to bother with you right now. I don't want you to walk in around the house. You know what I mean? Like that whole part. You have to have the balance there. We want our dogs to just be our dogs. And it, it, this mm -hmm. is where you're running into your, your struggles at. At home, when it's just you, Tom, and Sarah, let her be mm -hmm. a dog. But when you need her to do something, she needs to obey whatever it is you tell her to do. And so right. your challenge was, well, she was challenging your leadership position in other areas of your life, um, reacting mm -hmm. to other dogs, you know, growling, sh bearing teeth at you. Right? And so we had to pause all that freedom that she had to establish what the dynamic of the pack structure in your home was going to be. And, you know, it's important that she understand that she's part of your pack. You love her. Right. But yeah. she's at the bottom mm -hmm. of the totem pole and she has yeah. to respect your leadership position. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, and that entails her following the basic functioning commands. Heal, sit, down, stay, come, drop it or leave it, go to your spot or place, off and quiet. And as long as she's following those commands, when you need her to follow those commands, you can give her as much freedom as you want to do whatever it is she wants to be doing. But yeah. when you need her to be doing something other than what she's doing at any given moment, she needs to follow that immediately and not challenge you and start developing selective hearing syndrome or getting grumpy about it or baring teeth and growling at you. And so mm -hmm. the first step in that is when when it gets to the point where she's baring teeth, we got to put a stop to everything and make sure she yeah. understands where her position is in this pack. And then she mm -hmm. can earn some privileges back. But to be able to just run around and play and do whatever she wants all willy nilly whenever she decides, that's a privilege, right? Okay. Yeah. She's got to earn it. Yeah. She understands where she's supposed to move with you when you're walking with her. There is no pulling on a leash. And this is where your obedience becomes very important. There's no pulling on a leash. When, when you take her for a walk, we're not on a sniffing expedition. We're out walking. When, in your brain, you say, well, she wants to sniff and go potty. She's looking for a place to go potty. She, the whole walk, she isn't sniffing, looking for a place to go potty, right? She's exploring it, now. Explore, you know, and that's what I feel bad too, because I'm like, oh, the walk is her opportunity to see the world and, well, you know. She can't see the world if her nose is to the ground and she's constantly sniffing, looking for other dogs that may have crossed her territory. It's not her territory. It's yeah. yours. You're the leader, <laughs> and the leader makes the decisions about what's a threat, what's not a threat, what direction we're going to travel, how fast we're going to travel there, who can come, mm -hmm. who can go. So picture this scenario. We live in Florida. People mm -hmm. coming down, the, the, the snowbirds are flocking back, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we don't want our family from up north coming down, and they got all their family with them, and they, they're going for a night out of, or a day out of Florida. They're going down to the beach somewhere and they're coming out and grandma's there. And here you come with Sarah sniffing, even though you got your poopy bags with you. <laughs> and she decides that's where she wants to go potty. Mm -hmm. Even though you got your poopy bags, they don't want to see you coming down, letting your dog go potty in their yard. Right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we want her to be able to hold it until we get down here to this field where it's more appropriate for her to use potty and you can do what you got to do. So mm -hmm. it's potty on command. Of course she can sniff. She's a dog. But when your feet are moving, 
Her feet need to be moving. We call it a sniff by. She got to get get that sniff on the way by, but she shouldn't be holding up your walk and pulling on your leash, going to sniff over there and sniff yeah. over here. And you're walking in circles because she's getting you wrapped up. So, yeah. you know, that's where the obedience plays a role. And if you're consistent in that, you know, and the boundary when you're walking her is the heel position, right? Mm -hmm. But also in the home, if we're not having direct interaction with her, walking her, feeding her, playing with her, having a love fest or cuddle fest, right? You can do that as much as you want. You can let her, okay, Sarah, go find your toys and let her play. And while you're in the kitchen doing whatever you're doing and she's playing, doing her thing, but you're still supervising just like a two-year-old. You know, you're yeah. always supervising a two-year-old. Well, you're gonna supervise her as well. And then when yeah. playtime is over, Sarah, I need you to go to your spot. And she goes to her spot and that's the end of that. She understands her boundaries and she's respecting your leadership position. And if you can mm -hmm. get those two boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not worried about the other dogs on the walk, which is what you're worried about. The other dogs on the walk, you hiding behind trees, other people's <laughs> cars, you running yeah. up on people's porches. <laughs> like you looking like a weirdo out here. <laughs> Cut it out. But if she can respect the boundaries, in the home and she can res respect the boundaries on your walks, then it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what the distraction is because the distraction is a distraction is a distraction. Now right. you stone from the beginning, I've told you this has nothing to do with Sarah. It has everything to do with you. And every single time you running down a list about Sarah this, Sarah <laughs> that, Sarah this, and I just let you go because you got to get it out. But at yeah. the end of all your whole diatribe, what do mm -hmm. I say? It doesn't have anything to do with Sarah. It has everything to do with how you communicate to her through the <laughs> list. Boy, we about to have an experience today. Oh, God, I'm nervous. Okay. Listen, cut it out. You see what she's doing? Mm -hmm. She's done. Waiting patiently at your heel position. She is. Right? Mm -hmm. We've done this in every environment that you could possibly think of. Nothing's going to change just because we're down here with distractions. Don't let her distractions distract you from what you need to be communicating. Now, I don't want to have to hold your hand if I got to put you in a headlock, <laughs> right? The people down here are going to jump on me. What you doing in there?